Greetings, everybody. Welcome to uh, Let's Talk Radio. Um, my host today is Nicole Hinton, and I'm going to be uh, speaking to her about uh, some upcoming exciting things that she has going on and um, that she's, uh, you know, humbly welcomed me into as well. And um, wait a minute. That is <laughs> our new book. I humbly welcomed you into it. Yeah, I didn't want to do it, but she made me. No, I'm joking. She came out with the book, Those Who Wait on God is on Amazon. If you have never um, read it or seen it, or if you did see it and just was like, I don't know these people, I'm not getting it. <laughs> um, but if you've never heard of that book, it's on uh, Amazon. And it's about our testimony when we were, I like to call it, you know, ratchet to righteous. Because, you know, it kind of goes over our testimony before we came to God and some of the things that we did that was not totally pleasing. Um, it goes on to us meeting each other and waiting on God and um, and doing things differently. Uh, and one of the things that I think the book shows is that no matter what background you have come from, no matter what you have done, no matter, you know, because sometimes in church they try to make you feel like, you know, you know, you, you did wrong, you're not going to be blessed. You did this, you're not going to get this, you know. And this book really shows that despite of your, your your shortcomings, despite of your struggles, despite of the sin that you may have lived in for years and years and years, God will still bless you when you turn, when you turn your life around, you know. Um, the scripture is real. You know, he said, if my people who are called by my name, you know, will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, you know, that scripture is real. And I think that book right there is a testament of that, you know, and we both turn at, um, from our wicked ways at, at a certain place in time. Actually, it was the same year. Um, and not it's knowing crazy. each other, not even knowing each other. So that book is, you know, I think is a, a true blessing. You know, a lot of people have said it. Um, and we ended with our honeymoon in Rome, I think it was. Um, but we just wrote the sequel to those who wait on God, but this one is tried in the fire, you know, because a lot of things today, um, church folk, we so, we so secretive, you know, we, we keep secrets. We don't want to tell people how we really feel. And, um, we, Nicole and I have been married now 10 years, 10 years come February next month. Um, and this journey has not been easy and it has not been easy. It has not always been peaches and cream. You know, we've had some great times. We've had some very poor times, you know, literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, and, you know, and we just was kind of, you know, pretty much transparent with this, you know, um, book as well. And to help those who were struggling in that marriage or, or think that, because, you know, people will look at you, they will look at us, you know, we have heard people all the time say, you know, Y'all just seem like y'all got the perfect marriage, y'all the perfect, perfect relationship, and blah, blah, blah. There is no such thing as that, you know. And I think Tried in the Fire will show, you know, not only that that's not the case, but on the flip side, it does show that if you have Christ as your third will, that no matter the different personalities that we may have, um, you can stick together. You can stay together. You can push through it, you know. And, um, and that's what Tried in the Fire is about. You know, we tell our testimony about some very tough, tough times after the, saying the I do. And I mean, the ball started rolling pretty quick after that I do. Um, and uh, and that's what that book is Hello. about. Hello, <laughs> everybody. Um, but yes, but just piggybacking off, you know, what you said as it relates to people thinking that, you know, you just have the perfect marriage um, or even the perfect relationship with God. And I believe that in our first book, with people seeing our lives after the testing, after the, 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 the trials, and after being cleaned up by God, people can look at your life and your walk and just think that you have never done anything wrong. It's just smooth sailing. You just came out of the womb, you know, living right or whatever. And a lot of people think that because they see your life, you know, and that's the power, you know, of God and his power, you know, to, to transform your life. But that book really revealed, um, like he Some said, things that, you know, we went through in our lives before. And the same, you know, is, is with, you know, our marriage. We're two imperfect people. But like he said, you know, as long as you have, you know, the as long as you're walking the word, um, and you're denying your flesh, which is what we talk about 
in um, our book, Tried in the Fire, you know, any marriage can survive. Marriage is a divine institution. It has been designed by God. I had someone tell me, you know, a sister in Christ, like, I was like, I ain't getting y'all a book. Y'all perfect. Y'all don't, don't go through anything. And I was like, what? Not that she's saying this, but some people, they do feel like that. If you're not cussing each other out, you know, if you're not, you know, out here posting your business about your marriage right, yeah. that is you know that is that is not perfect and it's not about being fake either it's not about being you know phony and trying to front like your marriage is perfect no marriage is perfect because no one is perfect right. but we're all striving for for perfection and because marriage is a divine institution you know created by God for believers um, some things that the Lord was revealing to me um, about marriage is that it has it is actually designed to keep you together you know we always look at marriage as um, it's supposed to last forever but actually it was designed to last forever it's 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 different if i'm making sense it's not just supposed to last but it, it has been designed and created and built to last and it's also because it's a divine institution you know in a, in a godly covenant he has created it to not only work for your life um you know together you know to procreate to um, share life and enjoy life with another person, but it's also been divinely built to draw you closer to God. And this is why it's, you know, it mirrors the relationship that you have with God. You know, marriage is, uh, you know, a replica of God's love for the church. So while you're going through tests and trials as singles, you know, your tests and trials aren't supposed to drive you away from God. Your tests and trials actually are supposed to draw you closer to God and is the same in marriage this divine institution God has created when you go through tests and trials and you feel like giving up and you feel like you know parting ways because the pressure is heavy or you're going through uh, financial difficulties or you know all kinds of strain within family or whatever those tests and trials have you know uh, also have the ability even while you're married not to draw you apart but draw you um into the the face and the arms of god i come to find that marriage out of all the relationships that i had as a child you know with even with my children marriage is to me in my opinion the only relationship that has the ability to really humble you you know, when you're grown, you move out your mother, your father's house is like, look, you know, I'm gone now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when you're, you know, even with your children, you're in a place of authority, sit down. But when you're in a partnership, you know, in, in a marriage, you know, in any type of relationship, you should deny yourself. You should humble yourself. You should try to, you know, listen, but you can leave those people, <laughs> you know, you can disconnect from those people or you can go home and, and, and get a break from them for a week, a day or whatever. But in marriage, you're, you're stuck together. You know, you have to deny your flesh. You have to pray. You have to ask God to help you how to how to maneuver, how how to respond right. You know, it will drive you closer to God because it's a divine institution. You're going to need God, you know, to be able to, to humble yourself, to see things that other persons, uh, the, the, uh, the way the other person, you know, sees them. You're going to have to love. You're going to have to extend grace. You're going to have to receive grace. You're going to have to extend forgiveness. You're going to have to receive forgiveness. And, and while you're going through all that, you're being shaped into God's image. That's the beautiful thing about marriage. It is not a savior from loneliness. It's not your opportunity to get it in like you've been waiting for like he was like look you smiled at that part ain't smiled the whole time it's like no <laughs> you know all those <laughs> you well <was> thinking, right? <laughs> all those beautiful wonderful things that you can do under the covenant of marriage but it also keeps you know it should 
also keep you holy. It should looking or resembling, you know, God and taking on his divine nature. One of the things too is that, you know, um, and I hear people say, well, what happens if I'm married and I don't want to continue in it and I don't want to be with this person. I just, I'm just over it. I'm just done with it, you know, mm -hmm. or, um, I try not to treat them bad, but they just irk my nerves. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of the things that we have to remember is that, and as as my wife just said, you know, marriage is a godly covenant. You have to have God if this is going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so essentially what we're saying now is really for those individuals who are believers mm -hmm. and are in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't have God... It's just like coming to somebody's house and saying, you know, we're trying to go to, you know, somebody's job or something and, and you don't have authorization to get in it, mm. get into their building, you know, because you need them with you, you know, um, or even like I said, coming to somebody's house, you come to their house, how you gonna get in without them? If you get in without them, it's considered a crime. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's burglary. Going to jail. <laughs> it's burglary. You can't break, <laughs> can't go in somebody's house without their permission and without them being there. And it's just like marriage. Bruh, you man. can't come into right, <laughs> bro, man, right. You know, from the fourth, fifth floor. You know, you can't come into um, God's covenant mm -hmm. without Him. You know, it's not it's going to work. You know, um, and that's what I think happens a lot of times. You know, even when I was in uh, graduate school and I had take, take, uh, took this class on marriage and family counseling and a question came up, why don't marriages work? You know, and my thing was, you know, because too many people are going in it without God, mm -hmm. you know. And But the funny thing is, in Christianity, the divorce rate seems to be higher. How is it that we're the ones that have this quote unquote God and our divorce rate is higher. It's simple. It's very simple actually. It's because the enemy, Satan himself, who was the enemy of Christ, don't want us to procreate and create more children. He wants the dysfunction to continue. So there is no, um, cause if the dysfunction continue, that makes the church look bad. If the dysfunction continue, that makes people not want to come to, to Christ. That makes people say, well, why would I want your God and this is what the church look like? You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's a very, it's a scheme. It's a scheme by Satan himself that desires from marriage on down to our children, want the children, the fathers to be out the house. It's, it's a whole, it's a whole domino effect. Mm -hmm. If you can get the father out the house, if you can get the father to go on about his business and leave his family, that's why so many men have mind attacks in marriage. That's why so many men battle. Even if if I was to ask a married man now, how many times in your mind have you thought about leaving, just up and leaving your family, up and leaving your wife, up and leaving your kids? You know what I'm saying? Most men will say, you know what? It has crossed my mind. Not that we would do it, but the, the enemy fights our mind. You know what I'm saying? He fights our mind. You're not taking care of your family like God wants you to. So why are you still here? You don't make enough money to take care of them like you like you really want to. So won't you just go take care of yourself? He just mm. wants us out of the picture because he know if he if he get the man out the picture, mm. then our woman becomes vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? And I do all single ladies, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all independent, throw your hands up. You know, whatever. You know, but God created it for a man to be the head of a home. You know what I'm saying? It's the man that 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 we have to take our position. You know, in Christ. And we have to be in, in the position to pray and to war and to be that example to our children, not just our sons, but our daughters, so they can see what type of man they should be with. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I say this is a scheme from the enemy, because he's like, if I can distort the children's mind, mm -hmm. that's why I said, so this old sex, same sex marriage thing, if I can just distort the kid's mind, it'll distort the whole plan of God. But... N Satan, he just he 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 just don't realize that God, he's an omniscient God. He knows everything. He knew what he was going to plan. So it's nothing that he can get past him that's going to work. This plan is not going to work either. You know, it may seem like it's working. It may seem like the church is, is failing. It may seem like, you know, there is no power in the church. But trust and believe God said the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. So I say all that to say marriage is under attack. Marriage is under attack. We war, and, and, and that's the thing. It's a spiritual thing. You know, we go, we, you get in an argument, you, we, we, we lash words back and forth to your spouse. 
You know what I'm saying? We trying to hurt them. Oh, you said that. All right, let me say this. You know, and it's it's not about that. That's this is not this is not my enemy. You know what I'm saying? Your brother or your sister is not your enemy. Your coworker, your supervisor, that's not our enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is a, a spiritual thing. You know, we're warring with spirits, real spirits. And the, the other issue is people don't realize that demons are real. Mm -hmm. Spirits are real. We wrestle with these principalities, these spirits. If God is real, there is an opposite of him. The Bible is real, you know. So I don't want to be, belabor that point. But <laughs> um, so tried in the fire is a testament of what we've been through these past 10 years. And, 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 you know, and we're not saying we, you know, experts or anything like that. Only thing we're doing is just putting out testimony out there. This is what has happened. And we didn't even share half of it. You know, some of have, you know, not because we trying to hide anything or anything like that, but it will probably be a two book series if, if we would have <laughs> kept going, you know, but we tried to pull out the mo the things that would most benefit who's reading it. And that was the point, you know, the point was, because so many people say, well, we really don't know. We don't know what it's like to see a, a godly couple, you know what I'm saying, uh, hash out situations. And you'll see in this book, you know, um, sometimes we did it right. Sometimes we didn't. <laughs> sometimes we, you know, we, we, we had thoughts that we never thoughts. thought that we yeah. would have when we were, you know, when we were single. It's a true testament of that. Yes. And um, as it relates to the the attacks on marriages as you were talking about one of the things that was falling in my spirit because as I was writing you know my portions in in the book you're going to see us sharing and you're also going to um get to points in the book where we minister directly to you and at the end we also have a word of encouragement and we also give you um points um, and tools that you can actually implement in your marriage. Um, we give you uh, advice as well. And just like he said, you know, we've been 10 years in. It's not 50, but at the same time, you know, I believe that God allowed us to be hit in this short amount of time, you know, with the things that we were hit with so that we would be equipped just you know sometimes we always you know say oh it's for you it's for you it's for somebody else and that is the case but sometimes it's for us too you know and all that word and everything that I you know got in my spirit and all that fasting and praying that I did when I was single because when you're single you think that you're perfect you just like I know I'm ready all this time waiting this is how I'm going to respond when my husband comes or when my spouse comes because after all that time waiting it's just going to be peace we're not going to have no disagreements y'all going to fuss the devil is a lie you you binding up spirits when people tell you you know y'all two imperfect people you may go oh you're not speaking that we're gonna argue no we just gonna telecommunicate and he gonna know my <laughs> thoughts and we're gonna you know it's gonna be butterflies and, and sugar plums and chocolate you know and that's not how it is and like I said because we are in a godly covenant and God knows that it takes us surrendering to actually you know walk out you know this 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 faith walk with him he knows that he's going to need to be in it with us and that we're going to constantly have to deny our flesh while we're in it you know and sometimes you know like he said as believers um in christ um who are in, who is in marriage yes you not only are going to just experience life we know that everything is not the enemy but we can't say that the enemy does not have a hand in some of the thoughts that cross our minds and that our flesh doesn't either which is why we have to constantly deny you know our flesh especially in marriage and one of the things that the lord was revealing to me um and why most a lot of believers don't make it is because they have not surrendered to god just you know just as you know tony was saying when you have not you can be a believer in christ and you can have went and confessed that he's your Lord and your Savior, but not really take the he's your Lord part serious, seriously. And you know, if and, and you know that you haven't when you struggle with being obedient to God, you struggle with the times he tells you to study, you struggle with the time that he tells you to fast. Because sometimes we have in our mind that while we're single or even while we're married, our love alone 
is, is what's going to keep this thing together. I'll love alone for each other. What about when you don't feel so loving? When the person isn't so lovable, like he was saying. When the person is just, you know, getting on your nerves. Or you just feel like you're no longer attracted. Or you just feel like, you know, um, you want something different. All these things the Lord was showing me and downloading to me as I was writing, like I was hearing people's minds and questions as I was writing, you know, this book, what if I just don't feel like he was saying. And so in the book, we go and we break down, you know, really love based upon scripture and, you know, practical application, you know, love is not a feeling. And that's the first thing that we have to understand. It's not just this googly feeling that you get. It's not just butterflies. And how do we know that? Based upon our, our, our God's love for us. You know, he loved us when we were unlovable. His love caused him to do something. He, he did it without receiving love from us. So we know that love is an action. Love is not blind. I didn't just blindly stumble into this relationship with Tony. So all these people using their excuse to commit adultery and leave their spouses and be with somebody else because it's blind, you know, is something you can't help. It absolutely is is love is a choice. Love is a decision. God decided to love us when we were unlovable. God decided to marry us. God decided to stay married to the backslider. Love is intentional. It has a target and makes a decision. It's intentional. It's not blind. It's not a feeling. It's a decision. So you have to decide to love. You have to decide to stay together. You have to decide that even if you aren't feeling the butterflies, even if you, you and, and then some of this is spiritual warfare. You think that you're not attracted. You think that somebody else would be better. You think because this is actually warfare, which is why you have to continue to deny your flesh, which is why you have to stay full of the word of God because the word of God tests your thoughts. It it, it tests your thoughts. It tests tests your um your 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 thoughts, your motives, your actions, your response, and it and it and it actually reveals to you. Like one time I was and I didn't write about this in the book. I was feeling some kind of way, some crazy stuff, having some crazy, you know, dreams. I think I did hit that a little bit. Having some crazy dreams about being a widow, um, being on dates with other people. I'm like, what in the world is going on? You know, and God had to reveal it to me through spending time, you know, with him praying, you know, this is a spiritual attack. And I can't. And after that, I'm like, how many people think that they just feel like, okay, because some of you may have been in and out of relationships before your, your marriage might have been your first real relationship. And maybe you just gave your life to the Lord while you were in that relationship, or maybe even while you were saved, you were just jumping from different relationships. So you are not used to something consistent. Maybe you aren't used to being with somebody beyond a year you know, beyond two years. So now you're hitting five years. Now you're hitting three years. And subconsciously, you're you're going through this little thing where it's like, okay, by now, I would have had something different. By now, I would have been in something new. Mm -hmm. By now, I would have met somebody. And some people, you know, even after being saved, you know, just struggled, I guess, with, with that thing of or, or having that desire of wanting something new, experiencing something new. And this is why the flesh has has to die. This is why God, he, he not only just said, put you in this and have you in this marriage and be like, okay, you're supposed to stay in it. No, you're in a covenant. So with covenants, you have promises. With covenants, you have help. With covenants, you have protection. With co covenants, you have provision. With covenants, you have you have help. Warfare. And, and you have warfare. <laughs> That's the thing because, you know, um, so many times we, and just like she was just saying that, you know, you get to that place where, you know, you might want somebody else or... or that's you're under warf. That's warfare. Yes. That's spiritual warfare. Yes. That's the enemy. You you're thinking that putting that, an that idea is that you. is you. You know. Right. You know. Oh man, I do want something different. Or I do want to. 
Or you may not even say idea. that, but yeah, because those, you know, if you entertain, but if you entertain those, those thoughts, thoughts that try, you know, or mm -hmm. you keep watching certain TV shows, or uh -huh. this is what I would have been attracted to back right. when I was or in the world, or thinking that because now you you're know, married, you can open up your spirit yeah, to, to something things else. that you, know, you close you the can door create, to leave a single. You can create that desire. Oh. You know, you can create a desire hey. that wasn't even there. You know, so you got to be careful. <laughs> You that's know, that's why you gotta, you gotta, you gotta cover your eyes. You gotta cover your God, ears. Areas. You know what I'm saying? When you at work, you know, fellas and, 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 and homegirl coming, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Such and Such, you know, that's a nice tie. You know, she, well, she done told you your tie was nice yesterday too. So, Ooh. you know, you gotta, you Who gotta be careful. Who told you your tie was nice? Okay, I don't even wear a tie. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm joking. Because when you say that, people just be like, oh, that happened. You know, so, no. <laughs> um, I mean, stuff happens. But you know? if you know you got a but, fine little chocolate drop like this, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, so <laughs> when you a whole snack, I get it, but <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, because there's some people that's really probably sitting back right now. You know, you got your prize with you right there in your home, mm -hmm. and you know, and one thing I do love about the Tyler Perry movie, man, when he he talked about Which that one? eighty, uh, why did I get married? He mm -hmm. talked about that eighty twenty rule, and it's the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying so many people have left their gold at home and went out there and got some stainless steel. You know, went out there and got some some rusted old something that'll turn your neck green in two days. <laughs> you know, when you had straight up, you know, white gold, platinum, whatever the case may be, at your oh, house. That's good. You know what I'm saying? And and but because you feel like it didn't fit the way that it should, Ooh. you 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 try to leave instead of trying to lose weight. Ooh. You know, or trying to go buy a new ring instead of trying to. Get the other one on, okay, right? The other one, just you know, clean that one. That is yeah, so, just clean it. You know what I'm saying? That is so good. You gotta, you gotta, you know, work on, work on what you're supposed to work on. You know, right. stop trying to hit the reset button every time it don't work. Mm. And the other thing is, you know, too many people are going into marriage. Don't rush to get married. If you want to get married and you know God ain't tell you to get married yet, get your wedding dress, go hold the reception and and and, and walk down there by yourself. Marry the Lord. If that if you want to do it that bad, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying if that because just people our, people our are party. doing people are people are just marrying people yeah. just to have a fairy tale just come to true. Get out of loneliness, you know, just to have a, but just to have that desire. And some people just want attention. I just want I want that day that I just want that day where people just pay me some attention coming down the aisle and you know so they can see me and da da da. It's not even about that for real because let me tell you something. After that, I do. Mm. None of them people gonna be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? None of them are gonna be there the way, and 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 none of them really should be there. And some, and this is another reason some marriages are having issues is because you took too many people into your marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, you took too many people with you. All those people that was in at your reception, they should not have known your business. They should not have known that y'all argue eight times that week. They should not have known that you ain't had sex in how long period of time. They should not have known any of that. And, and and when you become and have a loose mouth, Ooh. the Bible says two flesh should become one. You know what I'm saying? This is me. If I go out bad talking her to somebody, I'm bad talking myself. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, I, that's I have, scriptural. And I have to cover her, you know. You know, if she busts me in my... Now, I'm not saying go ahead and get abused and don't tell nobody about <laughs> right, it. Right, right. You know, you, you report well, that. Hit the panic button out. or something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my point is, you know what I'm saying... You know, you just have a, 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 a regular marital argument and you're telling people every time you do it. And then it's time for the family reunion and they don't want your spouse there. You know, and this cause issues with the spouse. You know, it's a bunch of stuff. So keep people out your business, mm. you know, unless absolutely necessary. Right. But if you keep God in your business mm. and your spouse is filled with the Holy Spirit... When you communicate with the Lord, let me tell you, even with Nicole, it's been times where I was like, Lord, she dead wrong. I tried to tell her she was wrong. She didn't want to hear me. We just had a flat out argument. Um, you know, God, like for real, I don't know how much longer. Lord, help me. And then <laughs> she'd be waking me up after I'm already in a good sleep. The Lord dealt with me. You know, I'm sorry. You know, the, you know, but that's that's what we need. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. You know, mine might be a little harder than hers. You know, she come back a little quicker than I do. But um, a lot, a lot. Quicker. Most times, I'm more right though. <laughs> Guys, y'all know, you know, we right most of the time. But anyway, um, you know, so who was he talking about? Yeah, that. <laughs> you know, so you just gotta make sure that you know y'all go to the movies and stuff. 
make you really feel like, you know, what you wanted and what you have is not what you want or cause you after all that praying and fasting and seeking God make you renege on your vow or make you feel like, okay, is this it just because you having a disagreement just because so that is another thing that we want to show. It's, you know, it it's a lot of emphasis on seeking God and reference to, you know, a spouse. It's a lot of emphasis on, you know, that whole process, but we were led by God because we are both, even though we share and we're transparent, we're very private. God just make us tell our business, you know, and, um, <laughs> right. He just make us tell our business and, you know, we want, we were led by God now that we want it because this almost didn't make it out there. You know, it almost didn't make it out there. Not that we have anything to hide, right. you know, it had everything that we do has to be intentional. You know, we're not just kicking out books and publishing books just to just to publish them. It has to be intentional. It has to be spirit led. But so many people get into that process. So many people are getting married and they have this false um, this false perception of marriage and what it should be because you're equally yoked or because you got a prophetic word or because God told you. And we know that there's so many people that, that watch us and they're waiting and they hear our testimony and they, they heard how God, you know, had a prophet, you know, come and confirm things and tell me the year he was coming tell me the year we was getting married, the supernatural provision, the miraculous things. You saw us doing videos, encouraging you all, and you all getting married, and you go through that process, and you're like, okay, y'all ain't tell us this. You ain't tell us that even with a soulmate, even with a God-ordained spouse, that it would get tough, that you would feel like leaving. And it's not always that there was infidelity. You know, just mm -hmm. your flesh it takes, like we said, a lot of dying to your flesh, and, denying yourself. And another thing I always say, I'm married to God first. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're supposed to be. That's what I'm saying. You know, if you do part one right, which is in your singleness, that's half the battle. <laughs> because if you did part one right, which means you develop a relationship with God, you got his approval, mm -hmm. not your natural father's approval, not wow. your natural bishop's approval. You got God's approval to say, okay, this is your spouse. Because nowadays people are like, oh, you don't have to wait on God. You can make that decision on your own. The first 48 is real. That show is real. Spouses killing Not spouses. Funny, you need to know if this is the person God told you to be with. I don't care how long you have known them. You know what I'm saying? People are snapping mentally. And you have Christians that are dying unnecessarily because they were warned by God and they didn't heed it. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be careful because if God say somebody is your spouse and, and, and I'm talking about God, I'm not talking about our own reasoning, I'm our own rationale. I'm mm -hmm. talking about when God truly download this thing in your spirit where it's undeniable. And, and, and this is important for when those hard times come in that fire, because that's the glue that's going to hold it together. Mm -hmm. That stamp of approval from God is what's going to hold that marriage together. When that fire is turned up on a thousand, when that fire is e when when you get hot, I get hot quick. You know, in the middle of the night, since like they had that heat, a little space heater on, I'm like, listen, <laughs> listen. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 six I'm six two. He's cold blooded. I'm six two. Oh, I'm I'm two hundred something pounds. What's like I, I cannot I cannot do this heat. You know, and I I be ready to go out the room. She, she sometimes she woke up and I was down either down on the couch or in the other room somewhere. You know, because when when it's hot, our first instinct is to what? Wow. Leave. leave. Uh huh. Our first instinct is to get to comfort. You know, as the human. Yeah. You know, just like women, you get too cold. First thing you need to do is get warmed up. Don't get warmed up with somebody else that you ain't supposed to get warmed up with. Mm. You know? So, when that approval from God comes, and you know God's put his stamp of approval on it, you know that he's in it with you. You know what I'm saying? You know that he's in it with you. So, it's not even a matter of... And, and I'm going to be straight up honest. It was times during our marriage. I was like, Lord, I know you said it, but for real, mm -hmm. I don't even feel like it. You know, because you get so weak, our flesh mm -hmm. gets weak, and we begin to be like, "I'm just tired of fighting. I'm tired of." And not even it might not have been it might not have even been a fight with her. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of fighting with with trying to keep the bills up. I'm trying to tired of fighting and trying to find a decent job. I'm tired of fighting as a man. So then you get tired of fighting trying to be a good husband. You know, it's easy to be a bad husband. It's easy to be a bad father. Yes. It's easy to be a bad person. It's wow. hard to be good. It's hard to walk upright. It's hard to be a Christian. It's hard to follow the, the biblical principles that's laid out in the Bible. That's hard to do. It's hard. Why? Because our flesh wants to do the opposite. Our, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is not. So we have to be in a position to know that God is with us. You know, so I just encourage everybody who definitely need, and I know, I, I, I hear y'all saying it. Well, I don't think God told me this is my spouse, but you married him. And, you know, and, and, and God can still fix that too. Don't think just because, oh, well, well, I hear y'all, I hear what y'all saying, you know, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one, wait for God to tell me the right <laughs> one, and then I'm gonna stay with him. No, you did it, you know, because he, he said in his word that all things work together for the good. So if you did it, now it's the time to get it right. And deny that flesh. And deny your flesh and pray and ask God to come into this. God, you know, we didn't approach this thing the right way. We didn't come into this thing the right way, but you are a uh, omnipotent God, all powerful God. You can do anything. You know, and a marital covenant, that's your covenant, God. I pray that you step in. Help us with this. Somehow, Lord, you know, we 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 just not hitting the mark. We not doing it. And pray and ask them to help you with that situation. You know, so Yeah, that's 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 really good. My mouth got dry. <laughs> but y'all are I say no no. <laughs> and when you are in a godly covenant, you have to um, in order to, um, you know, be successful, I didn't say to be perfect, you know, but to be s successful, you're going to need that guy. Now we have so many other things that, you know, even believers are turning to. They believe therapists more and I'm not against therapy. I'm not against um, counseling. You should have counseling. You should continue to have counseling, even if you have a good marriage. I'm not talking about that, but don't leave out the word of God. Don't leave out the word of God because like you said, when you get in that counselor's office and you're just like, I just don't love him anymore. I just don't love her anymore. I just not. Then you go back to the word of God. You go back to your to the vow that you made before God because marriage is not just a piece of paper. Marriage is not a contract. A contract is made between two parties. You can you can get out of it, you know, but no, a covenant is, you know, it's divine. It's not just made by two human parties, but it's you, your spouse, and it is God. And, you know, you're going to need, you know, that manual for marriage. You're going to need the word of God. You're going to need to be surrendered to him. You're going to have to first be denying your flesh and faith to God and this is going to flow into every area of your life and your marriage is going to flow out when you're dealing with people that are difficult in ministry it's going to flow out of your life when you're dealing with different people you know um at your job you know it's it's just it's just going to work work with you and if you if you walk the word I didn't say that it's going to be easy but you'll be able to deny your flesh you'll be able to stay together instead of running apart the word of God um, causes you, um, your heart to be softened. You know, when you are in your word and you have a relationship with God, first and foremost, he can bring conviction, you know, and he can allow you to see when, like you said, when it's, when it's spiritual, because a lot of your fight is. Hey, fellas, you know, I encourage you all to, to, to pick up the book as well. You know, I, I put in there some of my testimony of what I was going through, um, at certain periods, you know, and I, again, as I said in the beginning of the video, um, it wasn't all bad, you know. It, it, it marriage is like, you know, it was like that little roller coaster. And I remember our first like three or four years, we was like, man, this is, you know, it's been pretty good, you know. It was like kind of on cruise control for real. God did. We hit that fourth year, something was like, wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> no, I hit that fourth year, it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Lord, hold on, Lord. You know, wait, you know, had to, we had to, you know, the, the pilot come on, say, put your seatbelt light on. Bless yeah, him. it was time for that seatbelt, you know. Bless and, um, but I put in the book how, um, things got rough. 
you know, it was a point that we were very close to being homeless, you know, with, with small children, um, me being separated from my older children. And, um, and that's a whole different dynamic in itself, having, uh, uh, children, you know, with a blended family and, um, losing my job out of a scandal or, or something that wasn't fair for lack of better words. And, um, and, and struggling. It was a humbling experience for me, you know. Um, God had to do some things and break some things in me. Um, and, it, you know, just uh, uh, from the perspective of how difficult it can be when your nature is to provide and you can't provide. You know, how hard that is for a man to truly keep walking with his head held up. And, um, and you can't provide for your family. It's a very difficult very, it was a very difficult season, you know, and I'm talking about multi-year. It wasn't, you know, just this, a couple of months, you know, this was a couple of years and, um, it was difficult, you know, so I encourage the men to, you know, if you're going through in your marriage and you're just like, I don't know how, how I'm going to rebound, you know, you know, pick up the book, you know, at the end, um, God was giving me some things to tell you all in there, um, about what to do, you know, because sometimes we get stuck. Because, you know, it's like, all right, I didn't have a father to teach me how to pray. I didn't have, I didn't see the father in the house, so I didn't know how to treat a wife. You know, I, I kind of messed up when we first got married. You know, I, I did X, Y, and Z, and, uh, you know, I did this, and I did that, and, you know, she lost my trust. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it kind of, you know, you, you feel like, you know, you're guilty, but y'all still together, but you know that tension is still there. You know, get the book, and I think that, you know, God will definitely minister to you in his own way. You know, um, and and I think it's going to be a blessing. I'm not just saying that because we wrote it. You know, I'm saying it because, you know, um, I truly believed it was it was spirit led, um, and what was said and what was uh, given. You know, in that it book, fell in my spirit um, that there is a couple, um, and particularly like you said, a man of God, who um, eyes is going to set on this video and. You're in a new marriage. The first marriage you felt as though you really messed things up. You, you know, there were some things that you didn't do that you, you know, should have done. Um, and as a result, that marriage came to an end for whatever, you know, reason that was. And now God has blessed you. God has blessed you to be in another marriage. And you are still carrying the guilt from that last marriage in your previous marriage and you are being hard on yourself and um, you're going, you haven't really expressed to your wife because you don't want your wife to believe that you still have some type of emotional attachment to the um, other marriage um, or that you still are in love or that you wish that, you know, you were with her or anything like that, but you just wish that that has been a burden um, to you. You just wish that you had um, done things better. It's not that you aren't grateful for the marriage that you have. And you know that God works all things out, you know, for his good. But now that you're older, now that you're wiser, you would have definitely done some things different. God is saying that you need to release this burden that you have been carrying. You are forgiven. Hallelujah. You've already asked God for his forgiveness. It doesn't matter if the other uh, young uh, other young lady moved away, whether she didn't want to accept your forgiveness, you know, or whatever. You've already prayed. You've already asked God for forgiveness. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You've already, you know, expressed your feelings to God. He knows your heart. You have to give that that over to God you need to move forward so that that burden does not that you're carrying from the previous relationship does not continue to 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 affect this relationship being fearful of doing something wrong being fearful of this one that's gonna go of this one leaving you and you know over overwhelming yourself and trying to overcompensate and you know you need to accept and receive God's forgiveness. He's saying to you now, you are forgiven. You have to let it go. 
enjoy your marriage enjoy your marriage and then use the not use the knowledge that you that you have from that previous relationship to help other men to help other young men so that they don't make the same mistakes so many are wishing that they had a do over that they could you know come back again and do it over you don't have to wish that you could come back and do it over every day God has given you a new day daily new mercies we see you don't have to wait for a new year you don't have to come back and, and live that whole marriage yes. out again God knows that this is the what was going to happen he knew that this is the wife that you would have, the children that you're supposed to have with her, the ministry that you're supposed to have with her, the life that you were supposed to have with her. So allow that experience to work for the good of yourself and for others. You are forgiven. Let it go. <laughs> and move forward. It's a new desk. So, okay. Um... Before I get into the uh, event, of course, the, our book is called Tried in the Fire. Like you said, it's the sequel from our first book, Those Who Wait on God. You can actually start pre-ordering your book right now. All the information will be underneath of the description box. It will be released, okay, um, towards the latter part of February, but we are taking pre-orders up until February the 10th. We are also having a black tie event. This black tie event that we are having, we're celebrating 10 years of marriage, but we're also going to be celebrating our book release. So we had opened it to um, those of uh, people that we knew via social media as well. Why? Because we were led by God. Tony and I was just going to go get a hotel and, <laughs> you know, plan a nice little weekend getaway or something like that. And we weren't even really pressed about getting a book out. Like we said, we was going to get it out. And then I struggled and I had so much mental warfare. I'm telling you, even while writing my parts of the book, the enemy kept saying, don't write this I need to hear your story and you know all kind of stuff i was so i was like wait a minute so i know people are gonna be blessed because of this but you know at the last moment tony was like we need to do this because last year in in 2018 we were going to do this black tie event in october and we went to the location we sat down with someone and everything and it just wasn't it just wasn't the time we just was like it's not the right time and then this time it fell on his spirit heavily after we already told his mom okay we probably just going to do this can you be available for this little weekend we're going to do this and he was like now's the time to do this black tie event now is the time to release the first book y'all was like oh yeah I, ooh, ee. and this one you were like woo woo oh oh really you know but you're going to be blessed whether you're single whether you're divorced whether you're widowed it's just for people period it's it's for people it's for you know even for those people that aren't believers you know, the divine, the miraculous ways that God, it's not just about, oh my goodness, you know, trouble and marriage. The glory of God is revealed. If you do not believe in miracles or you love going to the Bible and seeing how God made ways for the children of Israel, for them at Jericho, for Gideon, and you want to see he's what still, God is doing in, in this dispensation. Yes, in the 21st century. Listen, you're going to read this and also see how when you're in this godly covenant, when you walk with God, period, and you keep God first, how you experience miraculous. Mm -hmm. When you read this book, you're going to like, well, those of us who, who've been around us that know, you know, we aren't lying. But people are going to read this like, is this a work of fiction? Like, is this, you know, really, really happening? And I believe that we had to go through and endure all the things that we endured because God is looking for glory carriers. He is looking for people in the earth who are willing vessels who will walk his, walk this world for the event. Our cap is 100 people. We are close to that. 
But if you all have following, been following Tony and I, and you've been waiting for us to have an event that you can attend or that you would love to come to, if you've read our first book and you were like, oh, wow, you know, I would love to meet you all. I would love to, to come to something that you had. We have been led to open it to those persons, you know, um, so that you don't feel like, oh, you know what? I don't really know y'all like that. I know y'all like that. I feel connected in the spirit, you know, or whatever like that. This isn't a conference or a churchy, you know, event, but it is a book release. Um, and we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary and my birthday because it's all around the same time, but we're just celebrating all of that together. So you are invited, um, all the details about the tickets and where it's going to be is going to be in the description. It's at a really nice place and it's where we had our actual reception when we got married so we thought that that was going to be wonderful for those who read the book who know us who heard our testimony to actually have uh celebrate with us in the actual location that we testified about in the book we're going to have a nice sit down um dinner where you're going to be served it's black tie you can wear a gown or a tux or a suit and you know we're on a menu it's going to be lump crab cakes or either if you don't eat seafood you know a nice baked chicken we're going to have a guest comedian howard gaskins um from bet comic view that's going to be doing clean christian comedy we're going to just celebrate we're going to do some things where we're going to interact with each other and of course because of the amount of people unfortunately we can't literally sit down and have everybody sign because it would take up a lot of time due to the itinerary that we have for you guys um so upon getting your tickets if you're going to be purchasing a book your book would not be the same price as everybody else's but we wanted to personally be able to um give you your books at the book release event we're going to take pictures we're going to have music we're just going to celebrate love to see you there or either we thank you all for your prayers for those of you who are just seeing tony and i for the first time i was looking up marriage hello 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 and praise the lord to you thank you so much for listening to us and he is ready he's ready to go i said nothing <laughs> I, you, when you you can feel it i can He's talking to and me. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. You want chocolate almondy? Mm -hmm. Oh, Father. <laughs>